good morning everybody i welcome you all to this uh, series of lectures on electronic devices and circuits subject today i am going to discuss the common base configuration with characteristics i am v r sashri dao associate professor in the department of electronics and communication engineering iara so for today's uh, lecture i have taken the material and the figures from integrated electronics by milmel and halkias now the operation of pnp transistor can be explained by seeing this figure in which the emitter base junction is forward biased and the collector base junction is reverse biased so pnp transistor for p type emitter we have to give positive voltage so that it is forward biased and to the collector which is p terminal we have to give the negative voltage so that it is a reverse biased so this how the pnp transistor has to be connected for to operate in the active region and the voltage vee what you see here it provides a positive potential at the emitter so that the majority charge carriers which are holes in the p type emitter they are repelled and they are forced to cross the emitted base junction to reach the base region this is a base region and because uh, the majority charge carriers are holes and the base region consists of electrons the base region is of n type and the majority charge carriers in the base region are electrons but base region is lightly doped so the holes which are coming from the emitter some of them combine with the electrons in the base region and that constitutes the base current ib so this is a base current ib and the leftover holes they cross the base region to enter into the collector region so whatever the holes that are left out after the recombination they enter into the collector region and that constitutes the collector current ic so the voltage the vee it provides a positive potential at the emitter and this uh, forces the holes towards the base region and when some of the holes are lost due to recombination in the base region and that constitutes the base current and whatever leftover holes are there they enter into the collector region and that is nothing but the collector current so the conduction in pnp transistor is uh, mostly due to the holes and the collector current is slightly less than the emitter current because some holes are lost in the base region because of the recombination and the increase or decrease in the emitter current it affects naturally the collector current so this is as far as the pnp transistor is concerned if you take the npn transistor in npn transistor the resultant charge carriers are electrons and the conduction is basically due to the electrons in a npn transistor and other uh, there also the collector current is slightly less than emitter current and the decrease in, in uh, emitter current it also affects the collector current in the npn transistor in a similar fashion now let us see what are the various transistor components in a bjt bipolar junction transistor so let us take a typically a pnp transistor so uh, this is the p type emitter and this is the collector and this is the base how the construction of the bjt is done emitter is heavily doped and collector is moderately doped the area of collector is more than the area of emitter and base is sandwiched between these two p type uh, regions and it is lightly doped so this is how uh, the construction of the bjt is done so accordingly the current distribution in a pnp transistor is like this <coughs> so the the whole current in emitter is designated by ipe and the 
electron current is represented by INE. INE means it is an electron current in the empty region. IP means it is a whole current in the P type region. And IPC means it is a uh, collector current in the P type uh, region, which is uh, uh, which is collector is moderately low, and IC naught is the reverse saturation current. So the emitter current basically it consists of the whole current because emitter is heavily doped and <coughs> when it is heavily doped you have more number of holes. So the emitter current consists of whole current IPE and the majority charge carriers are holes which are passing from emitter to the base and electron current you get due to the electrons passing from the base region to the emitter region. As uh, base is lightly doped, naturally the magnitude of INE is less than IPE. This is why, because the collector region is uh, moderately doped and empty region is heavily doped, base region is lightly doped. So, as the base region is lightly doped, the magnitude of INE is less than IPA. So, in a commercial transistor, let me repeat, the doping of emitter is made much larger than the doping of base. So, in a PNP transistor, the emitter current almost consists of holes. So, what is the total emitter current? Total emitter current is due to the holes causing from, causing from P to N and also it is due to electrons causing from base to the emitter in this, in this direction. But uh, the conventional current direction is opposite to the direction of electron flow. So, that is why I and E is shown in this way. The conventional current is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. So, the electron current flow from the base to the emitter is represented in this direction only and it is represented by I and E. So, the total emitted current I e is the sum of whole current I P e and the electron current I and E. And as we have discussed, not all homes uh, crossing the emitter junction they reach the collector junction because some of them are lost because of recombination in the n type base and that is nothing but the base current. So, base current uh, is, uh, is represented by IPE minus IPC. So, what happens here? Some of the holes are lost due to the recombination in the base region. Remaining leftover holes they reach the collector region and that is nothing but IPC. So, what is the base current IPC minus uh, IPE minus IPC. So, the, there is nothing but the base current. So, this is the base current. Okay. And next uh, one more thing. Um, in the active region, the Emitter junction is forward biased and the collector junction is reverse biased. So, as we know, whenever a PN junction is reverse biased, there is going to be a reverse saturation current. So, for example, now consider for the time being that the emitter is open circuited. That means there is no voltage applied to the emitter. Only collector junction is biased. That means it is reverse biased. So, when no voltage is applied to the emitter, Naturally, the emitter current is zero. So, the whole current in the collector is almost zero. But in such condition, as the collector junction is reverse biased, there is going to be a reverse saturation current flowing from the base to the collector. Reverse saturation current is because of the minority charge carriers. The minority charge carriers in the base region are nothing but holes. So, holes they move from the base to the collector. So, that constitutes IC naught. 
so whenever we, we apply a emitter voltage we are going to have the emitter current because of the holes injection from emitter to the collector and also we, we are going to have the reverse saturation current ic naught so the collector current ic is the sum of whole current in the collector itc and the reverse saturation current ic naught so as you see here uh, the, this is a collector terminal <coughs> so the collector current ic It is, the, it is the sum of IPC plus IC naught. Okay. Now let us see the various terms emitter efficiency. So emitter efficiency it is defined as a ratio of injected current carriers at the emitter base junction and the total emitter current. So emitter efficiency is equal to current injected at the collector junction to the total emitter current. So, what is the current emitted at the collector junction? It is IPC. And what is the total em emitter current IPC plus IND? So, it is equal to IPC by IE. So, that is the emitter efficiency. <coughs> and it is less than 1. So, emitter efficiency it is defined as the ratio of injected current, injected current carrier set the emitter base junction to the total emitter current. What is the total emitter current? Emitter current, total emitter current IE is equal to IPE plus IND. What is IPE? It is the whole current because of the holes being injected from the emitter to the base. And what is IND? It is the electrons which are injected from base to the emitter because because base is uh, lightly doped. IPE is more, much, much more than IND. So, what is the uh, emitter efficiency? IPE, IPE by IE. So, which is nothing but IPE by IPE plus IND. And this is less than 1. That is the emitter efficiency. Another uh, term is the transport factor beta. So, this is the ratio of injected carrier current density reaching at the collector base junction to the carrier current at the emitter base junction. See, the amount, all the holes which are produced by the emitter, they do not reach the collector because some of the holes are lost due to the recombination in the base region. So, what is the ratio of uh, <coughs> injected carrier current reaching at the collector base junction? to the carrier current at the emitter base junction is called as the transport factor. So, the transport factor beta is equal to IPC by IPE. The next term is the last signal current gain. What is the current gain? What is the gain? Gain is about output by input. Current again is output current by input current. So, it is the ratio of current due to the injected charge carriers IPC to the total emitter current. So, alpha is equal to IPC by IE. So, what is IPC? IC minus IC naught divided by IE. So, IC is equal to alpha IE plus IC naught, where alpha is the large signal current gain. We will just now we have discussed that the total current collector current is nothing but IPC plus IC naught, the reverse saturation current. So, alpha is equal to IPC by IE. So, we get IPC is nothing but IC minus IC naught. So, we have written the same thing here to the emitter current, total emitter current. Total emitter current consists of holes and electrons. Holes are injected from the emitter to the base and electrons are emitted from 
the base to the emitter. So IC minus IC naught divided by IA. So IC is equal to alpha IA plus IC naught. There is a large signal current. <coughs> Now, let us discuss about the common base configuration. Uh, there are three terminals in a transistor, emitter, base and collector. So, when we have to make one configuration, in any configuration, one terminal will be common to both the input and output. So, in common base configuration, base terminal is common to the input and output. So, in common base configuration, Emitter is the input terminal and the collector is the output terminal and base terminal is connected to the ground normally. So, emitter and <coughs> common base terminal they are called as input port terminals. Similarly, the collector terminal and the base terminal they are called as the output terminals. So, in common base configuration, the Normally, the base terminal is grounded, so the common base uh, configuration is also called as the grounded configuration. So, the common base configuration is also referred as the common base amplifier or CV amplifier or CV configuration. Now, this is the um, uh, circuit diagram for a common base configuration using NPN transistor. And normally, transistor we operate in the active region. In active region, the Emitter junction is forward biased and the collector junction is reverse biased. So, if you see here, we apply a negative voltage to the emitter terminal so that it is forward biased and a positive voltage to the base terminal so that it is forward biased. And the collector junction, we apply a positive voltage and collector because it is made of N type material, naturally it is reverse biased. So, this is how we make the circuit configuration. Now, the supply voltage uh, between base and emitter we denote it by VBE, while supply voltage between collector and base we denote it by VCB. So, as uh, mentioned uh, just now, <coughs> the base emitter junction is always forward biased and collector base junction is reverse biased whenever the transistor is used as. An amplifier. And suppose you want to use the transistor as a switch, then the transistor has to be operated in the saturation region in which the both junctions are forward biased. There is another region of operation that is known as the cutoff region in that the emitter junction and the collector junction, both junctions are reverse biased. So, because of the forward bias voltage VBE. The free electrons in the emitter region, they experience a repulsive force from the negative terminal and they are forced to enter into the base region. So similarly, the holes in the base region, they experience a reverse repulsive force from the positive terminal of the battery and that constitutes the uh, emitter current. So you see here, <coughs> this is N-type emitter, N-type collector and P-type base. So, when we connect a battery in this way, the electrons which are the majority charge carriers in the emitter, they experience a repulsive force and they enter into the base region and some of the electrons, they are lost because of recombination of the holes present in the base and that constitutes the base current, IB and remaining electrons, they enter into the collective region and this is how the current flows. So, the electric current uh, in the collector region, well, let me draw the circuit uh, using the circuit symbol, is a N type emitter, N, P, N. So, this is the IE. This is IC, this is IB. <coughs> so, as you see here, 
the emitter current is the sum of the base and the collector currents. So, emitter current is greater than the base current and the collector current. So, we can say that the emitter current is always greater than the collector current. And we, how you get base current? Because base current is because of the recombination which takes place in the narrow base region. So, the base emitter junction at the input side, it acts like a forward bias diode. Now, so the common base amplifier, it has a low impedance. Now, our objective is to find out the input and output characteristics of the common base uh, configuration. So, the common base configuration, the input characteristics are nothing but the input current versus input voltage at a constant value of output voltage. <coughs> So, you see here this is uh, N region and this is P region and uh, uh, the base emitter junction at the input side it consists of N and P. What is N and P? It is nothing but a diode. So, it it acts like a forward bias diode. So, the common base amplifier it has a low impedance. We know that when we give a forward bias uh, voltage to a P injection diode it offers a very low impedance. But at the same time, if you if we give a reverse bias to the P injection diode, the reverse saturation current is very less and it offers a very really high impedance. So we say that the common base amplifier it has a very really low impedance. But what happens to the collector base junction? It is the reverse bias. So it uh, offers a very high output impedance. So transistors with the low impedance and high output impedance naturally they provide high voltage gain. So, whenever we have an amplifier with low input impedance and high output impedance, we get a high voltage gain and such configurations can be used for voltage multiplication or voltage amplification. So, the leakage current, the minority charge carrier uh, it is because of the flow of minority charge carriers crossing the collector base junction at the uh, junction because it is the reverse bias and it is much smaller than alpha E. So, the total current IC is equal to alpha E plus I leakage current and uh, we also can write this as IC is equal to alpha IE plus IC naught. The, this is nothing but the leakage current. So, if IE is equal to 0, the collector current is nothing but the leakage current. So, this also can be represented by IC VO, that is a character based current with the emitter based circuit open. Now, to find out the characteristics of common base amplifier, the input and output characteristics, input characteristics and output characteristics, input characteristics, we see the relation between the input voltage versus the input current at a constant value of output voltage. And output characteristics, we see the uh, variation between output voltage versus output current at a constant input current. So, we change the input current to various values and we see what is the trend between the output current versus output voltage. So, that is nothing but the output characteristic. So, this is the test setup which is required to find out the characteristics of common base amplifier. So, you see here. To vary the input voltage, uh, we put this rheostat and using this rheostat, we can vary the input voltage. Accordingly, the current is going to vary, which is going into the transistor terminals. This is of course what we have taken here is a PNP transistor. And uh, how to uh, see the input uh, characteristics? You fix the value of this voltage, then vary uh, the VEE and measure this voltage and this current. So, that gives uh, the input characteristics. So, the emitter to base voltage VEV can be varied by adjusting the potentiometer R1 
and a series resistor RS is inserted in the emitter circuit to limit the emitter current. So RS acts like a current limiting resistor. So the value of emitter change to a large value even the value of potentiometer slightly change. So the value of collector current changes slightly by changing the value of potentiometer R2. So the input and output characteristic of the potentiometer uh, let us discuss now. So as we have seen the input character for the input characteristics the um, we see the variation of input voltage versus the input current at different values of output voltage. So for a common base configuration So this is uh, what is the input voltage VEB. So we have taken on the x-axis VEB. And what is the input current IE? So on the y-axis we have taken IE and for different values of output voltage. So this is the VCB. So when, and when the VCB is equal to zero, we get a characteristic curve like this. When VCB is equal to minus ten volts, we get a curve like this. So as uh, the reverse bias is increased, the curves they shift towards the left side. And there is going to be increase in the emitter current. Why is it so? So, as we increase the reverse bias at the collector's junction, the depletion layer width in this place it increases. So, for zero volts, let us say the depletion layer width is like this. When you make the reverse voltage to minus 10 volts, the depletion layer width becomes more. Then what happens? The effective base region width it reduces because depletion region is encroaching into the base region. So the effective base width it reduces. So when the effective base width reduces, naturally there is a less scope for recombination. So the recombination it gets reduced. So when the recombination gets reduced, now more and more holes they reach the collector region. So thereby the collector current it thereby the emitter current it increases. So that is why when you increase the reverse voltage, the curves they shift towards the left hand side, which indicate substantial increase in the emitter current. So this is how the input characteristics are determined. So we take uh, we fix the value of uh, the output voltage using the potentiometer which is there in the output circuit. Then we vary the input voltage and measure the input current uh, using the ammeter which is connected with series in the input port. Then we from the observation table then we draw the um, characteristic in this way. So if we increase the reverse voltage just now as I explained you the depletion layer width at the collector's junction increases, but effectively reduces the base width, and there is a less scope for recombination. So, more and more holes they reach the collector. So, the emitter current is going to increase. So, that's why the curves they shift towards the y axis with increasing the reverse bias. So, let me repeat once again. So, for a specific value of VCB, the curve is a diode characteristic in the forward region because the pin junction is forward biased at the emitter. So, the value of uh, voltage uh, base current, uh, with the, uh, when the value of voltage base current increases, the value of emitter current also increases slightly and the junction behaves like a better diode. And the emitter and collector current, they are independent of the collector base voltage. So the emitter current increases with a small increase in the emitter base voltage VEB, it shows the input resistance is small. So what is the input resistance is a ratio of change in the emitter base voltage to the resulting change in the emitter current at constant collector base voltage VCB and the input resistance uh, is given by the formula delta 
VBE by delta IE. So this is how the input resistance is calculated. So the value of collector base voltage uh, as it increases, with increase in the collector base current, the value of input resistance is very low and the value may be vary from few ohms to 10 ohms. So the input resistance is uh, maximum it is going to be 100 ohms, not more than that. Now let us come to the output characteristic. Output characteristic is nothing but we form an observation table um, measuring the output current and the output voltage for various fixed values of input currents. So what is the input current? IE. So we keep the emitter current constant, then we vary the, the output voltage and we measure the output current. And next, again for next value of uh, emitter current, again we, we take another set of data, then we draw the characteristic curves. So that is nothing but the output characteristic. So as you see here, these are the various curves for different values of the emitter current, i.e. equal to 2.5 amps, 2 milliamperes, 1.51 like that. So as uh, the emitter current increases and Though we increase the output uh, voltage, the output current almost remains the same. So um, this is called as uh, the active region and the transistor it behaves like a constant current source in the active region. So when the input current is, uh, emitter current is 2.5 milliamperes, um, at most the collector current can be 2.5, little less than that, but not more than 2.5 milliamperes. Why is it so? Because some carriers are lost due to the recombination in the base region. So it can never be more than the emitter current. So IC can never be more than the emitter current for a common base configuration. So for a common base configuration, the current gain is always less than 1. And uh, if uh, the collector base voltage is made uh, uh, in, uh, in other direction, so as to make the collector junction in forward bias condition, then the transistor enters into saturation region, then we are going to find a decrease in the collector current. And when it is made sufficiently positive, the collector current almost drops to zero. So this is a region in the saturation conditions and this represents the cutoff region. So the active region of the collector base junction, uh, we say that, that it is uh, reverse biased and the collector junction IC is almost equal to the emitter current and the transistor is always operating in this region so that it can be used for voltage amplifications. And in the active region, just now I have shown you that the curves are almost flat and the large values of VCB produce only a very, very small change in the collector current. So we say that the common base configuration has very high output resistance. So when VCB is a positive, I told you just now that it enters into the saturation region and the collector current, it decreases. So this is a saturation state in which the collector current does not depend upon the emitter current. It is going to be much, much less than the emitter current. And when the emitter current is zero, the collector current is not zero because we are going to have the leakage current which is represented by ICVO. So this uh, ICVO, it is very temperature sensitive. For every 10 degrees rise in temperature, we know that it doubles. So the the reverse leakage current ICB0, it is temperature sensitive and its value ring ranges from 0 0.1 to 1.0 microamperes for a silicon transistor and 2 to 5 microamperes for a germanium transistor. The current magnitudes are more for a germanium transistor compared to silicon transistor. So how do we measure the output resistance? R0 is equal to delta VCB by delta IC that is the output resistance. So that is a ratio of change in the collector base voltage to the change in the collector current at constant emitter current. So that is the output resistance. 
So the output character state of the change in character current is very little with the change in VCB. So we say that the output resistance of CB configuration is very high. So it can be used for voltage amplification purposes. So what is early effect? So the early effect is when we apply a forward bias to the emitter junction and reverse bias to the collector junction, when the collector junction reverse bias is increased, naturally the depletion layer width of the collector junction it increases and the effective base width it reduces. So that is nothing but the early effect. That is also called as the base width modulation. So this is an emitter and this is a base pin and this is a collector. So when I increase the reverse bias of the collector junction, what happens? This depletion width increases here. And with the forward bias, the depletion layer width is small. So what is the effective base width? This is the effective base width W. So this effective base with the W, it reduces as I increase the reverse bias at the collector junction. So as the reverse bias is increased, this uh, width it becomes more and the effective base width it reduces. So that is nothing but early effect. And if we increase the reverse bias beyond certain limit, then what happens? This depletion level it uh, spreads spreads more and more and it stays comes it touches the empty region so when it touches the empty region collector and emitter they get short circuited and the transistor gets damaged and that is called as punch through it's also called as reach through Okay. So, as uh, the collector reverse bias is increased, uh, the depletion layer width it spreads more into the base region, the effective base width it reduces. So, base width gets modulated as we increase, as we vary the collector base voltage. So, that is known as base width modulation, that is also called as the early effect. And beyond certain limit, if we increase the collector base voltage, then the depletion layer becomes more and more and it touches the empty region, the collector and emitter they get short circuited and the transistor gets damaged and that is called as the punch through. So with this I conclude today's session on the common base configuration. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.